Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Hello, I'm Rebecca Larson, and welcome back to another episode of A Brief History, where we dive into the intriguing tales of history's forgotten figures. Today, we journey back to the Tudor era, a time of royal intrigue and captivating personalities. Our focus today, Lady Anne Parr, a woman of remarkable distinction in the court of Henry VIII. The Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. As the youngest surviving child of Sir Thomas Parr and Maud Green, Anne followed her elder and better known siblings, Catherine and William. Unfortunately, Anne Parr never knew her father as he died in 1517 when she was two years old, so it's likely she had no memory of him at all. After the death of her husband, Maud Parr decided not to remarry and instead focused her energy on raising her children and serving her queen. The Parr children were well educated and were prepared to serve at Tudor court. Thanks to her mother's connections at Tudor Court, Anne received a humanist education and was taught alongside other noble children. Her reading lists at the time would have included such greats as Cicero, Plato, and even Erasmus. Anne also learned Latin, French, and Italian, not to mention arithmetic, and much, much more. Her education was advised by a cousin of Sir Thomas Parr named Cuthbert Tunstall. He was the Bishop of London. Later, he became Bishop of Durham. The education of Maud's children was modeled after the studies recommended and used by Sir Thomas More. And we know how well his daughter Margaret was educated. During her formative years, Anne spent much of her time at Rye House in Hertfordshire. This was their primary residence after the death of Thomas Parr. Maud Parr held the position as lady-in-waiting in the household of Queen Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife. As a show of respect and custom of the time, she named her eldest daughter after her queen. Little did she know that her own Catherine would one day hold the title of queen consort as well. Maud's position with the queen was an important one. She was given rooms at court so she could be readily available to serve her mistress whenever necessary. It was Maud who integrated Anne into the royal household around 1531 at the age of 15 or 16. Anne was a maid of honor to Queen Catherine. Sadly, Maud died that same year, leaving Anne essentially an orphan. But with her position at court, Anne could secure a future for herself. A maid of honor was generally a young girl in her teens, just starting out at court. In order to hold the position, one had to be part of a noble family. Physical beauty was also a requirement, so we must assume that Anne was considered attractive. A maid of honor also had to impress courtiers. Knowing a foreign language and being a good dancer were only a couple of the necessities of holding the position. Within a couple of years, Anne would be moved to the household of Anne Boleyn after the downfall of Catherine of Aragon. Now, what's the difference between a maid of honor and a lady-in-waiting? Well, a lady-in-waiting was a married lady who served the queen. Some of these ladies had served prior to becoming married as maids of honor, just like Anne. 
A woman could also become a lady-in-waiting when she married a prominent member of the king's privy chamber or privy council. These ladies helped dress the queen, they provided companionship to her, and served her during her meals. A lady-in-waiting spent considerable time with the queen. They were kept busy with such activities like needlework, sewing, and embroidery. Anne Parr would have become a lady-in-waiting after she married Sir William Herbert in 1538. This was after the death of Jane Seymour and before Henry VIII married Anne of Cleves. In Anne of Cleves's household, she would have served alongside women like Elizabeth Seymour, Lady Cromwell, and Jane Guilford, Lady Dudley. But as a maid of honor in the household of Anne Boleyn, Anne Parr would have been witness to the events between Anne and King Henry. When Henry VIII had his second wife beheaded and married Jane Seymour, Anne Parr was there. She was also one of the people present at the baptism of Prince Edward and was part of the funeral procession of Queen Jane. She was with the fourth chariot. As I previously stated, in February 1538, Anne Parr married Sir William Herbert, Esquire of the King's Body. It's very likely that she met William at court. When Henry married Anne of Cleves, Anne Parr returned to court as a lady-in-waiting for the new queen. The marriage was short-lived, and Henry soon annulled his marriage from Anne of Cleves and wed the very young and flirtatious Catherine Howard. Anne Parr continued as a lady-in-waiting to Catherine Howard and was also the keeper of the Queen's jewels. Anne left court briefly to give birth to her son, Henry. She returned at court sometime after, and her timing coincided with the fall of Catherine Howard. Anne attended Catherine when she was imprisoned at Sion Abbey, and then in the Tower of London. In 1543, Anne witnessed the wedding ceremony at Hampton Court Palace between her sister, Catherine Parr, and King Henry VIII. Anne was Queen Catherine's chief lady-in-waiting. The sisters were indeed close, and Anne was well-experienced at court and in the Queen's household. In 1547, when Anne was pregnant with her second child, a son named Edward, she did her lying in at Hanworth Manor thanks to her sister, Catherine Parr, who was queen consort at the time. Anne appears to have also had a decent relationship with Anne Seymour. More to come on that. In total, Anne and William had three children together. Henry, who succeeded his father as second Earl of Pembroke, Sir Edward Herbert, and a daughter named Lady Anne Herbert, who married Francis Lord Talbot, son of George Talbot, Earl of Shrewsbury whose second wife was Bess of Hardwick and who also was selected keeper of Mary, Queen of Scots during her imprisonment in England. There's always so many connections here. In 1551, about a year after their daughter's birth, William Herbert became Baron Herbert of Cardiff, and the following day he was created Earl of Pembroke. Anne was now Countess of Pembroke. The raise in status surely had something to do with his time served at Tudor court, but also because William and his wife Anne appeared to have a good relationship with the Somersets. Until Edward Seymour's fall in 1552, when Herbert would have, due to self-preservation, separated himself from his friend. Anne died nearly a month after Somerset's execution and was buried eight days later on the 28th of February, 1552, in Old St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Her memorial says that she was a most faithful wife, a woman of greatest piety and discretion. Anne Parr experienced a lot during her time at court, especially when it came to the wives of Henry VIII. She saw the poor treatment of Catherine of Aragon, the rise and fall of Anne Boleyn, the rise of another fellow lady, Jane Seymour, and her untimely death after providing the king with a son, the quick reign of Anne of Cleves, the experience of the downfall of Catherine Howard, and the reign of her sister, Catherine Parr. It's easy to say Anne Parr probably had a lot of advice for her sister, Queen Catherine Parr, after all she witnessed. 
Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of A Brief History. I hope you learned a little bit about Anne Parr that maybe you didn't know before. And if you want, dig a little deeper yourself and see what you can find. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.